Okay, so today we're gonna we're gonna show you how I did this without nuts. This is a nut-free zone. Uh, we just use these these products right here. CRC intake valve cleaner combined with some brake cleaner. Now I used CRC when I did it, but this is just the one I have with me right now. Doesn't matter. Just get some brake cleaner. They're all the same. And it's a lot of chemicals, so mask up because you don't want to be breathing this stuff in. Cancer's a bitch. Oh, and you're also gonna need a bunch of zip ties like this. So you take them, bundle them up together, take another zip tie, wrap it around like this, and zip tie these bad boys together like that. You'll see why later, but basically it's a scrubby tool. Yeah, so simply by using these off the shelf products, you can get this job done. It's just gonna cost you some blood, sweat, and tears. No big deal, right? Save yourself some money, do things yourself. I always preach doing things yourself if you have the ability to do so, if you have the tools, and everything I'm using in this video will be linked down below in the description for you if you wanna pick it up for yourself if you don't already have it. If you already have some of these products, great. It's gonna be even cheaper for you. On top of doing this, since you already have everything out of the way, it's a great time to also change out those spark plugs. So we'll be doing that as well, and I'd throw in an AAM drop-in high flow filter, whatever you want to call it. It's just a drop-in. And yeah, let's go. Let me show you. All right, and I'm not going to get into how I removed everything because that's not this type of video. For that, I'm going to shout out to Joda Joda STI. They did an excellent job on explaining on how to get to these intake manifolds to clean them. Step-by-step -step process. It was really great. I followed every step of theirs. So shout out to them. I'll, I'll link them down below as well. So you can go over there if you want to figure out how to get it off. But once you finally get everything removed, you are going to see which side. Typically, one side is already open. So you'll see which side of the valves is open. And as you can see in there, it is disgusting. This was definitely needed. These are direct injected engines, so any direct injected engine needs this done every so often. This vehicle has 71,000 miles on it, and I'm not sure if it's ever been done. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a 21 millimeter socket, and you're going to make sure that one side is completely closed. So you'll have your left side and your right side of the engine, and just look in there and make sure those valves are closed before you work on that side. Once you get that done, you're gonna wanna close up the other side to keep any debris from falling in there because they're going to be open. So anything that falls in there could go right into the engine and cause a lot of issues. So make sure you uh, cover that up. So with that being done, you are going to go ahead and just start pouring in this brake cleaner and the CRC intake valve cleaner. Spray that into the valves, fill them up. All right, don't fill them entirely all the way. You don't need to. Put a good amount in there and let it soak. So after you let it soak for a few minutes, you're gonna take those zip ties and you are going to use those zip ties to scrub. And you're going to scrub and scrub and scrub. You'll be pleasantly surprised at how well this works. Now with my shop back, I, I attached a little like straw to it so it would go down in there really good. So try to find something if you can. Or you can just use shop towels. So take your shop back and suck it up. So suck up all that gunk out of there, get it out, and then take some rags and push those rags down in there to kind of absorb up all the rest. If you still see that you still have a decent amount of carbon buildup or you want to get it even more clean, just repeat the process until it's clean. And eventually they're going to come out really nice just like this. So since you have basically the entire engine apart, right? Most of the stuff out of the way, go ahead and do the spark plugs. It's a great time to do them. And for the spark plugs, you're gonna wanna use the NGK96024 laser iridium spark plugs. So since these are boxer engines, these spark plugs are directly on the side of the engine. So they're a little bit difficult to get to. They're really difficult to get to. However, if you follow the process I'm about to tell you, it's not that hard. You're going to need a thin ratcheting wrench, right? Socket wrench to get this done. And then you're going to need an extension and then you're going to need a socket or spark plug, spark plug socket. You're gonna do it piece by piece. You're going to take the spark plug socket and then you're going to take the extension and put those together. And then you're going to feed those into the spark plug holes. So obviously first you need to remove the ignition coil. It's something pretty simple. You're gonna pull it out and then kind of twist up as you pull it out. That'll get them out of there. So with those ignition coils out of the way, you're gonna take your spark plug socket and then you're going to feed it in and then attach the extension and then push that in and then you will attach your actual wrench. That's how you get through this tight space. So once that's attached, 
So you can obviously wrench those out of there and then you're going to do the same process with pulling them out. So take your wrench off and start pulling each piece out. So pull out your extension, pull that apart and then pull out the spark plug. So it's a bit of a process, but it can be done. So take your time, have some patience because you're gonna need it. And hell, while we're here, I went ahead and cleaned out the intake box Cleaned that all up, it was really dirty and gross. Uh, and then got rid of that old air filter, cheap air filter, and we dropped in an AEM air filter, high flow, reusable air filter. This has been really nice. It does increase the noise just slightly, just enough to where you can really hear that turbo when you're getting on it. So I like that. But yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Keep it simple. It's going to take you some time. Have a lot of patience. Make sure you set aside several hours to do this, especially if it's your first time taking this engine apart because I had to obviously so watch it step by step. So that's what took the longest. If you're familiar with taking this engine apart, it'll probably go by a lot smoother. If you have a power socket wrench, whatever they're called, uh, that'll be super helpful because you don't have to sit here and crank each bolt out when you're taking this engine apart. It'll be a lot faster for you. So definitely something I need to invest in. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.